Hi guys, it's Aoife from Fred VC Dead Laughing and I am here with a weekly wrap up to talk about a couple of books I finished off at the start of the week and a few books I've also read for the Thrillerathon this week. The first book I want to talk about is a book um, that I was reading while I was on my holidays but it was an audiobook so I didn't actually finish this up until Monday when I came home um, and that was The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri. This is a um, fiction book about a man called Nuri um, who originally um, is living in, Ale in Aleppo, Syria with his wife and his son um, and basically we are hearing his journey um, having to flee Syria as a refugee um, because obviously of the war uh, going on there um, and travelling through Europe um, um, to try and seek a better life um, in the United Kingdom. He knows who his cousin is um, and the two of them used to be beekeepers in Syria and uh, Nuri wants to meet up with his cousin in the United Kingdom and maybe start another beekeeping um, kind of business or start beekeeping again with him. Um, but throughout the book we are kind of getting flashbacks of Nuri's time in Syria um, and we, when we meet him he is in a refugee centre in um, the UK and they're kind of waiting to get their proper refugee status. Um, and we are getting flashbacks of his time in Syria and his time travelling through Europe um, trying to get there and just the absolute, like the things he had to go through the trauma of everything, the trauma of having to live in Syria while it was a war zone. I didn't love this as much as I thought. Um, I feel like there was just something in it that I just didn't connect as much with the story as I wanted to, but I still did definitely appreciate um, having what these refugees had to go through um, and what these migrants had to go through as they walked through Europe and some of the dangers they had to face and not only that but the PTSD that they've they've had to um a lot of them have probably had to suffer once they actually got to safety and how long it probably took a lot of people to really feel safe and really feel like that they could start a new home um, somewhere else and I really did appreciate a lot of that um but as for the book itself I just felt like there was just something there that was missing I'm not sure if it was just kind of an emotional impact for me I, I'm not sure um but there was something there that just I just didn't warm to it as much as I thought um so I did end up giving this a three out of five stars overall um there's a possibility maybe I might have liked it better if I'd read it on on, phys by, on physical book but I'm not 100% sure um but the audiobook was fine I did enjoy the audiobook um but yeah it was just missing some sort of impact for me. The next book I finished was one I also started um, on the plane home from my holidays um, and I only finished this I think on Monday or Tuesday. That is On Beauty by Sadie Smith. Um, this is one I was really looking forward to. I've heard a lot of people talk about Sadie Smith though a lot of people have recommended White Teeth to me um, but for some reason this one's a little bit shorter so I decided to pick this one up for my holidays instead as this one was just really calling out to me. Um, unfortunately I just really didn't like this one. Um, this kind of focuses around one particular family, um, a woman, a mother who is black and um, African American, the father is um, British uh, and white and then the children are obviously biracial and um, they have grown up in America um, and the father is a, a college professor and we know that he has this feud with this other college professor and there's just this kind of thing between the two families and um, there's always a bit of strife between the families and the children, some of the children don't really see it that way and you know are trying to get involved with other members of that family um, kind of romantically and this is kind of just a look on people and how they act and just I guess the weird things people do and what some people do as they get older and just being really shitty like this whole book is just people being really shitty like there's no one one character in this book that I actually liked and I felt he was like a decent person and that was the mother and every single other person including the children are all assholes like the children are utter assholes and um, all of them and I really 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 didn't like them um I'm sure there was a point to this story that I just I think I just didn't get it I think a lot of people will read this and like really get something out of it however I just wasn't one of those people um I just really didn't really get the point of the story I just saw it as a load of assholes acting as assholes and I just thought it was a load of shitty people doing shitty things to each other um, and repeating mistakes that they knew, that they know going in is a really bad thing and they just still do them and yeah I just, yeah I just really, did, I just didn't enjoy it. I um, it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Little Darlings by Melanie Golding. This is a book um, I received from HarperCollins in exchange for an honest review. This book focuses um, on a woman called Lauren who's literally just given birth to her twin boys she had a little bit of a traumatic birth um, and she's kind of left alone in like um, the room that she's in. There's I think one other mother in the room and she's just exhausted and um, she's trying to breastfeed her kids. The kids are crying. It's like there was someone there trying to take her children away from her and trying to swap her children for um, babies that aren't hers. Um, and we see Lauren kind of 
trying to struggle with what is reality and what is just her mind, her exhausted mind making things up. Um, she goes home, she isn't getting that much help from her husband, he's a little bit useless, um, and she continues in this kind of exhausted state and she's still hyper aware that there's someone out there trying to steal her children. And then we have the police involved and the police still also think that she's just a little bit manic. Um, they want to send her off to like, you know, like a mental hospital to uh, get treatment. And we as a reader have to try and figure out, is she actually hallucinating is this some sort of postpartum psychosis or is it that there's actually something sinister out there trying to take her children um and i just loved the atmosphere of this this was just this gave me just like the creeps even from like the first chapter just her being like having having given birth being exhausted um being alone in this hospital room just everything about that just even made me feel like oh god um and i really just it gave me the creeps and it made me kind of scared um so obviously i've this one probably isn't one to read if you've probably just given birth or are about to give birth because you know there is that thing of like someone's trying to take your children so I'm sure as a new mother this one would actually be quite triggering to read or it could be hard to read um, because I myself was like getting super creeped out by this just some of the things in it there is this kind of um like horror aspect to it where we don't know if you know everything that is happening is in Lauren's mind or there is there this kind of dark entity out there trying to take her children um there is this there it's definitely a little bit of a horror aspect and I really really loved it um, and I think it was just done so well I think the writing of this was excellent I love when a book creeps me out and this one definitely creeped me out I felt just everything while I was reading it and I loved it so I gave it a really strong four out of five stars the next book I finished for Thrillathon was a book I was reading on audio and this is Careful What You Wish For by Hallie Efron um this one I really really enjoyed for the most part um this is about a woman called Emily who kind of is um she's a little bit of like a Marie Kondo like professional organizer where she is she has this business where she goes out to people and helps them basically organize their stuff um, and helps them like you know declutter their lives in a bit in a way and it's kind of like two parts of the story one part is that she gets this client who um finds out that their deceased husband had this like storage unit that they never knew about and when emily goes to check this out she sees a lot of things that she feels might have actually been like like old books and manuscripts and stuff that she feels actually might have been stolen from libraries and um, so there's this like criminal aspect of things there like she doesn't really know what to do about that um, and then second of all she is called out to this other um to this other house to a woman called Quinn who wants to get rid of some of her stuff that her husband has never allowed into um their house when Emily's with Quinn they kind of like hit it off really well and they start like they share like a bottle of Prosecco and as they like, kind of they get a little bit giddy and a little bit tipsy they start talking about how both of their husbands because Emily's husband as well even though she is a professional organizer he loves going off and like he's a collector and he loves going off to auctions and he has his own room where he collects like a load of junk and it really annoys her um and her and Quinn end up bonding about how their husbands both collect all this junk and and um, how annoying it is to have a husband who is like that and they start they start kind of joking around about how great it would be just like get rid of their husbands and then the next day Quinn's husband disappears and Emily suddenly becomes kind of like this person of interest in this disappearance and things kind of start going from there um, and Emily has to try and figure out like is she being set up what the hell is going on um, and there's all these different like things that have happened that day that seem to be all connected to this disappearance and um, it's really really interesting I really loved how this went how this went along i loved the kind of the the side plot of the um the stolen things from the library and how that kind of ended up fitting in a little bit into the main storyline um i thought a lot of the, what was done was really clever i really liked the character of emily I really felt for her and um, i really was just like rooting for her the whole time she was a little she like she was quite clever with some things um she wasn't <sighs> Um, I just really, really liked following along with her. Um, but I will say, I did actually find the ending of this one really, really disappointing because I was really enjoying it, particularly for an audiobook. I was so hooked on it. Um, and then the ending happened, and I just felt like the ending was just like really lazy in a way it was just one of those endings where that I just don't really like I just wanted something more I wanted more of a twist I feel like we didn't really get a proper we never got an explanation of why one person did what they did in this book um, and I feel like we should have gotten an explanation um and yeah I just felt like the ending was lazy and it could have been just so much more interesting and could have been so much better and um, so I ended up giving this I did originally have it as like a 3.5 out of 5 stars but I think because the ending was so disappointing is probably 3 out of 5 stars but the writing itself I really enjoyed and I'll definitely read more of Hallie Efron's work
And the next book I finished for the Thrillathon was The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This is about a woman called Emma who when she was 13 years old she was um, a, in this summer camp and three people who she was like friends with who she shared a cabin with they disappeared one night and they were never returned and Emma has basically for the last 15 years of her life has been dealing with loads of guilt over that night and um, she feels guilty over some certain things that happened that night that she thinks might have led the girl's disappearance um, and when she's invited back to the camp to be kind of a um kind of an instructor to like kind of like an art a teacher in a way she basically accepts it because she wants she's going to take that opportunity to go and properly investigate the camp and see if there's anything the police missed the first time around when the girls disappeared um, and to see if she can actually find out what really happened to them because these girls disappeared their bodies were never found um, and Emma feels like there's just something more that she could maybe discover um, so she goes to this camp and things just start happening she starts figuring out a few things that she never realized the first time round um and then basically sinister things are happening around them we enjoyed this one i really love the flashback elements to it the true truths and a lie thing that was in this it felt very kind of like pretty liars there was a character in it that was very, that was very like alison and pretty liars there was like you know like the queen bee and who like gathered everyone else up to her it wasn't particularly a, a nice character I just love the slow build up like as we got like you know the we got into the camp we got like to feel the camp we got to feel the people around them everyone you know was really like you know a little bit like suspicious and um, even Emma herself sometimes you wondered if she was a little bit because we know that she did have some mental health problems where maybe she wasn't remembering things as well as she could or she was seeing things and um, so at times she could be a little bit of an unreliable narrator and I will say I did find it mostly with final girls as well except for like a few sex scenes in final girls but this one in particular Riley Saker as far as I know is a male writer and I think he actually writes females really really well which I think is like you don't actually see that a whole lot um, with male writers sometimes they just get it completely wrong but I think Riley Sager does it really really well um, and he even like included things about like Emma when she was at camp she got her first period and just kind of the confusion and the terror of that ha happening that of that when you're alone away from your parents and you don't really know what to do um, and I just really enjoyed that that was put in there as well and I just enjoyed the mystery of this I was very hooked on figuring out what happened in the end I really enjoyed the epilogue um, and yeah it was just a really great thriller and I definitely recommend it to people so I gave a four out of five star and the last book i finished this week was rune of stars by lindsay miller this obviously wasn't for thriller -thon, but i have a bunch of kind of sequels and stuff i've gotten out from the library to try and catch up on some uh, trilogies and duologies and stuff to um yeah to basically just try and catch up uh, so i needed to read this because it's due back it was actually due back in the library yesterday and i didn't finish it in time so i'll have to go back this week um so this is the second book in the mask of shadows duology and um, the first book is Ma mask of shadows and we are following a character called sal um who basically um, enters this competition to become one of the Queen's assassins um, and Sal is really interesting because Sal basically is on this tale of revenge and um, their whole family was, was killed by these shadows and um, these kind of magical creatures that basically kill people in this really horrible way and um, basically their entire nation really was killed by these shadows and Sal managed to be one of the very few to escape it um, and now they are on a mission of revenge about the, against the people who basically allowed that to happen and they feel that by being one of the Queen's assassins um, they can basically start ticking names off that list that they have um and Sal as well is a gender fluid protagonist so obviously they prefer the they them um, pronouns most of the time um so this is the second book obviously I can't say too much of what is actually happening in this book but Sal is kind of continuing along with ticking stuff off off their list um this one I did like I didn't love um I found it it's actually kind of interesting because near when I was the end of this I decided to go back and look at my review, my written review that I had for Mask of Shadows and a lot of the things I found difficult about Mask of Shadows I found with this book as well. I found it and um, it took me a very long time, not very long time but it took me a while to really get into the story. I felt I was just like really spaced out from the story for a while when I was reading it. I was trying to be, part of it was me trying to remember what had happened in the first one because some of the things I couldn't quite remember but I did eventually get back into it um, and then there was just some things that Sal did that some things just felt even as like a trained assassin felt a little bit stupid and a little bit like you know you know they just got caught a few too many times for someone who should be like a really good assassin and then second of all uh, some things just seemed too easy at the same time like I just yeah I just couldn't really buy them as being like this like really really cool good assassin. They end up going like, a completely different way near the end than I expected it to be and I kind of liked that and I kind of didn't um I just felt like there were some characters that were brought into it that were a bit like you never heard of before and suddenly they were like these big players in this game and I was just like oh god okay and um, I guess this is happening um 
so yeah I did like the writing is good I just there's just something about this story that I was never able to connect fully and as I said it took me a while to get into and um, so I gave it a three out of five stars so that's everything I've read this week please let me know what you guys think and I will see you guys again next time